Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Cube. We are here in New York City at the Cube East, our New York Stock Exchange new studio set in partnership with NYSC, collaboration with NYEC Wired Community. The Cube is here. I'm John Furrier, your host. Behind us is all the action, bringing Wall Street and Silicon Valley together. Emma Gupta is here. She's the CEO of Trusted AI, one of the top conversations this week. It's been Climate Week, it's been um, UN General Assembly. And again, one of the topics that's been consistent across all has been governance, how do you handle AI? And then, you know, private AI is weaved into the conversation. At the end of the day, it's all about the data and trust. Emma, thanks for coming on the Cube. My pleasure, thank you. So can you talk about your company, Trusted AI, what you guys do? Let's set the context, give us, some, some, um, give us a little bit of a start here. So what we're doing is helping companies de-risk their adoption of AI by identifying what are the trustworthiness factors that they need for de-risking. So to give you an example, five years ago, I defined eight essential pillars of trustworthy AI, which actually coincide with what NIST had created um, a few years later on. And this is a um, practitioner as well as a strategic approach to how do we, how do we uh, assemble a uh, actionable strategy to define the risk by context and address them. So what are those eight pillars? Security and privacy right at the foundation because that is in really the essence and essential. And then we go into more uh, AI specific domains such as transparency. Are you interacting with a automation system, or are you system? Uh, are you, uh, you know, is it an automated decision, etc.? So, are you uh, interacting with a computer? Um, explainability. Yeah. So those are specific to AI, um, and then it goes more into the actionable components: audit, accountability, regulations, and bias. So. It's those okay. are the eight pillars. Those are the eight pillars. Okay, so from uh, privacy to bias seems to be the spectrum. Correct. What? What's? Uh, when did you write, put that together? This what was in 2019. Okay. Now let me ask you a question before we start diving in. How much has changed? I saw the latest NIST report. Not bad. Right. Really good. They're doing a good job. So you start to see standards recommendations coming in. Um, obviously now security fields being implemented, guardrails as well. Everyone's talking about guardrails. How much has changed since the original eight pillars in your mind? What's the big action? That, yeah, that's interesting To Let's take a look. So what has um, stayed constant is those eight pillars. Nothing has changed in terms of, you know, these can pose a risk and how are we going to address them? That has not changed. What has changed is <laughs> the going from predictive AI or those yeah. decision-making systems to now generative AI. And even if you talk to data scientists, for example, I was just at the Pentagon, um, and, and uh, just data scientists in general even, the threat model and the threat vectors for both those types of AI are not the same. So that's what's different. Yeah. Right. And there, and then we'll go, we'll talk more about why is that, a, a, you know, why can that be a problem? You know, I really think you're bringing up one of the most critical points uh, that I'm seeing in our reporting and our Cube research a team has looked at is that you hit the nail on the head with the comment predictive is different than generative. And, and the reason why is, is that in all the verticals and everyone where they're adopting AI and transitioning to this new wave, everything's changing both on the back end and the front end. User experience changing on the back end. But what's interesting is, is that you, if you can't just adopt a new IT strategy without culturally nailing the processes, um, you can't change the processes and the user experience without understanding the back end implications of scale because the role of data is involved. So, I mean, this is first time in my career I've, I've never seen, I've been many cycles of innovation, both of the back end and the front end, both really changing radically at this point in time. And I think predictive was different and good but different than this, they're not mutually exclusive either. Right. And right. so, okay, this Gen AI is exploding those eight pillars in, in action is more activity right. because the new thing's here. But the old didn't go away either. So it's not, some people aren't grokking that. And this is, I think, a very nuanced point, but you can't just kill the old to bring in the new. It's actually not going away. It's more just as relevant than the new one. So this is a cultural moment. 
I mean, this share your thoughts on this if you have any, because this is what I find to be the consistent pattern in in process and overall transformation is that it isn't this or that, it's both. And if you don't do both, right. you can't capitalize by preserving the best of the existing while bringing in the new. Yes, so that's that's why our focus on de-risking, right? Because the risk is going to be different and the implementation is going to be different. And then there is that fear of missing out, right? Uh, that adoption, um, you know, ramping up across the board, show us how we can use this. So I call it the, uh, a lot of the dog um, being, you know, it, it's the tail wagging the dog because a lot of times there's a, that fear of missing out. So you're like, we have this data, what can we do? With, show us what we can do and do it fast, Yeah. right? So those old concepts of fast fail, uh, fail fast, et cetera, you know, th- those are not gonna work the same way, right? That, yep. that culture you talked about, um, seeing a lot of hostility in companies right now between the workforce because they don't want to adopt AI and, you know, they feel it's going to be replacing them. So we are, we are seeing a lot out there which is beyond the risk of the technology and not, uh, you know, fully getting a, a handle on that is that, that culture and that adoption within the company of what do we need to do, how do we do it, And so we are trying to solve for that along with the industry. And just to quickly touch on what that means is when we are looking at uh, companies, we're looking at upskilling the labor so they don't, professionals, so they don't feel they're they're gonna be, uh, uh, their job's gonna be done better by a machine, right? But it's how do we use AI to do our job better? And that's, that's really a critical point in a lot of companies too. You know, one of the things I see, too, and to your point, is there's a lot of whitewashing, too. They jump on the bandway. Oh, we're private AI. <laughs> I mean, I think private AI is legit, in my opinion. I think people should look at AI from the lens of a power law. You're going to have popular, open, public things, and then specialty models that will be either public or private. And I think um, there's a lot of discussion around data protection. Again, back from old data protection mechanisms to new data protection mechanisms hit those pillars. So, so you know, obviously a big discussion. Um, which pillar of the eight, in your opinion, is the most robust in, in discussion? Because um, remember, there's a fear of missing out. There's also a fear of getting, get, getting um, breached or fear of losing. Right. Not winning out, but like I might get my risk management might blow up. I might get screwed over. I mean, so I might miss out. I'm fearing well, half the group's missing out, fear of missing out. The other ones, half are getting scared. Right. So they got to get a risk management piece. So which of the pillars is the most explosive and in, in disruptive enablement or conversation? So I would say accountability. If we start with that, that is a fundamental thing, right? If you're developing something, who at the end owns the uh, responsibility and you know so that's one thing we start with is taking yeah. a look at defining the uh, stakeholders within a company of who should be um, contributing to that so I would say as a pillar that is easier to obtain <laughs> right because you can uh, you can if you are in um, driven towards it you can obtain that quite easily right who should be involved is it the business team? Is it the uh, legal team? Or the privacy team? The security team? The bus- uh, you know, um, data science team? Who, who needs to be involved, right? And that could be across different verticals, different industry could be easily identified. You know, where, yeah. Go ahead, go continue. Where it becomes more of a challenge is not having the expertise to recognize what the other pillars are. For example, security. I'll tell you a funny story. The reason I even started on trustworthy AI is because I come from a background of cybersecurity and I was trying to see what do we need to do to secure AI. And then I realized that as I started doing more research, there was a lot of material on how to use cybersecurity for AI or AI for cybersecurity, but not how to secure AI. And I realized that cybersecurity by itself is not enough to secure AI. And even if you just take cybersecurity, that is very different from conventional system security. You just think like data provenance. Where's your data coming from? Well, you know, application security, 
not even part of security teams for a lot of companies. So just even handling cybersecurity for AI, that is something that cannot be skipped over and is extremely important. Ray AI framework. Supply chain, by the way, again, that's data, not lineage, data, where did it come from? Yeah. How do you explain it to your villain? That's enough custody. I mean, yeah, it's just beautiful. I mean, like, that could be hacked. Right, right. <laughs> so, so there are so many yeah. additional vectors of risk that we have, we really cannot do it in silos, you know. Yeah. So those eight pillars are good, but we have to look at them to, to get it. Pamela, I got to so say, if I'm the customer, pretend I'm the customer, um, or look at someone looking for help, my mind's blown. Like, it's just like mind blown. Oh my God, there's so many vectors of attack. What do I do? Where do I start? So I think there's a lot of education. And, um, you know, I always have this a phrase, you know, you don't play chess unless you know what checkmate looks like. So there's a lot of kind of, you got to know what you're dealing with before you can understand it. You can't just jump in and throw throw words around and cliches and or, or, or consultants. You got to get your hands dirty right. with it. So what, what's your advice? Um, are people doing that? I mean, NYSE, um, Anon runs the Center of Excellence and he's, he and I had that conversation. He's working through practical examples so he understands it better. He can, and so there's a lot of that going on, but it's hard. What do you advise people? Because people want trusted AI, but this, their minds are blowing. They're like, too many things. What do I start? Do I, how do I prioritize? How do I even understand it? So what's your advice here and, and what's your opinion? So um, the first thing we start with is really taking and doing a, that risk assessment. What is the AI risk assessment? What is the algorithmic impact assessment? What is the company vision? And what is the intended outcome? Right. What are you looking to do? And from that, defining who needs to be involved, who, who needs that seat at the table to define what mm -hmm. goes into that, what should that end product look like? And at the end of the day, what, do you, uh, what are the risks get that can affect mm -hmm. you from achieving that? So that is going to be contextual, you know, if it's in healthcare, if it's, you know, regardless of whether there's critical infrastructure, whether it's, you know, whatever it may be, it's extremely contextual. But to your point as to where do you start, it's by knowing what you are trying to achieve. And then out of that, which, what is the uncertainty that you need to kind of um, be prepared for? So out of those eight pillars, that will be really important to kind of see, you know, is there a privacy concern? You know, if we corral all this data, aggregate all this data, and then pre uh, create a model, um, are we, it, are we uh, at risk for harm coming from, you know, data exposure of, yeah. you know, what we have seen. We've seen algorithmic failures already, yeah. right? As we're building the ship, we're trying to um, um, steer the direction, we're trying to fix it. But um, in terms of how do we do this, it's, it's really simple, actually. You know, you, you do your inventory of what are those uh, AI, do your AI inventory right at the start. Yep. Where is it, internal or external, and what kind of data is involved, you know, data protection and data security, privacy, extremely important. So nothing different there. So we've done this, right? We can do this. And, but the only thing to watch out for is what is um, specific to AI and that, for example, such as generative AI, when you, just to give you one example, yep. when we had when we're looking at even threat vectors or security, you know, risk factors, when it comes to the data that can be uh, created based on probability, right? So these are all statistical models, generative AI, the how it's producing yeah. output. It doesn't have any idea of context, but we as humans do. Yeah. So we have to take that into account. You know, even if you set up a red teaming plan for testing, you know, um, is the, your system secure? That's a, a very small part of how, you know, it can be a risk for you because even in creating that red teaming plan or security testing or whatever the risk might be, the pillar that you're looking at and is uh, important for you, if you put in a high risk environment, then your, your calculations change, right? Yeah. So you really cannot put a system that can fa um, fabricate information and come to decisions and make, uh, you know, be a part of an automated decision making yeah. system. So those are the kind of things. You right. bring up a good use case there. And I think that's illustrative of potential downside scenario. 
of not testing at scale or red teaming the models and AI because you know that's where it could really go off the rails. So what what is I mean, most people don't think of red teaming as an AI issue. That's mostly right. a security issue. Um, are people doing that now? Are they red teaming data sets? Are, are they red teaming? Um, and who does that risk management? Because, again, cyber is interesting because it, it, you come from a cyber background. I see why it all connect. Because it's red teaming and the, the risk management has elevated itself so much in cyber right. that this falls right into the data. I mean, cybersecurity is a data risk management problem. At the end of the day, there's a lot of things going on, but now AI is both. So it's kind of a cyber problem set, but generative AI is just another application. So we've seen the AppSec application security movie before. Right. So so this is interesting. Who's the target for trusted AI? The CFO, the CISO, the CEO, board? How is, do you see uh, a pattern emerging there? Because certainly the de everyone wants to be de-risking. So you, you had me at de-risking, right, from the customer. Yes, yeah, so it's really essential to have those right stakeholders in that conversation because uh, what I like to tell the people I'm working with is this is not, not us against different teams or different teams can do this alone. We really have to figure out where and, and sometimes we even be testing for the same things, you know making sure the systems yeah. are staying on track, right? Mm -hmm. And then we haven't even covered other pillars like regulations, for example, wow. you know, or, or audit. Audit is a completely different, um, has implications which are vastly different from the existing way of auditing systems. We didn't have to do this kind of, you know, um, step by step, you know, what decisions are we uh, making? How do we mm -hmm. track all that because it is learning on data, so it yeah. is going to keep changing, it's dynamic. So I think um, it, the more complex something is, and complexity, as you know, is the enemy of risk, right? Is the yeah. enemy of yeah. security. So the more we look to simplify it, and that is yeah. by creating that center of excellence, which goes with what is the business strategy? What is the, the business outcomes that you want? What are the trust KPIs yeah. that you need? And then, how, and then the other very important part is how do you bring the rest of the workforce into it yeah. so that they can do their work better and they don't feel that this is going to be replacing them because I've seen immense hostility in some companies uh, where you could have, that would be a big roadblock to you creating a, the right and effective solution because the, um, the, the company personnel are not contributing the right um, uh, information to go into it yeah. to make it more so, uh Robust. Hit. I think you nailed the cultural aspect there. Uh, that's awesome. I think that's key. Culture, the workforce, the users, because users in the loop is going to be key as reasoning gets steps up. Causal AI is right around the corner. Uh, we're right now dealing with probability uh, outcomes. Um, talk about the company, Trusted AI. Let's get into what you guys are doing. I know well, I will use the rest of the time uh, of, our, of our time here on, on the company that you're the CEO of. Um, what's your mission? Who are you talking with? What are some of your customers? Who's Who's working with you? Who's the customer? And what are the sort of the work product that you guys are doing? So we are a pure consulting company. We have a lot of company, um, you know, like strategic partners, such as platform providers of AI, risk management platform providers, um, you know, those who are doing auditing. For, but we are a pure strategy creation company. We want people, organizations, we want to teach them how to fish. We are not catching fish for them, right? And, and so some of the things that I'm mentioning, that is coming directly from working with customers, um, figuring out where is that roadblock going to come from besides the, you know, absolutely no, yeah. no um, the negotiation on what are those risks and how, you know, that yeah. those need to be process mapped out. Right. But then creating that uh, yeah. strategy and that process for the company so that they can um, go uh, have that capability in place from the right yeah. people involved, the uh, technology involved, people uh, and process involved. And what we do is we create a um, certification seal, which is not for, you know, by system by system. It's for saying that, yes, we have worked with them. We have a process and a um, capability in place in the organization where they can come in, uh, take in any AI systems that are internal or external you know, because external um, vendors might have, uh, you know, deployed. Mm -hmm. 
So how you know how do you do you have the right risk assessment and management process in place? Yeah, I love your phrase. I don't teach them how to fish. I don't fish for them. Um, classic uh, professional services motion. Congratulations with the great service. My question is not to again, make fun of the of the fishing example. I use it all the time. Do they even know what fish looks like? And do you have to take them out and show them where the fish are? Okay, that's where they are. I'll do it because we're in a new world where okay, I don't know the difference between the fish. Are they the right fish? So this is a real part of this, why I was saying we're getting into this practitioner. That's why I like the center of excellence uh, uh, approach as a stepping stone to building the teams and the culture and the mechanisms. Right. Um, what's their view on the fish? Do they say, what's a fish? Or when do we fish? How do we fish? Yeah, sometimes it is an eye-opening moment, you know, where um, it, it, it was, oh, you mean uh, this can be a risk? The risk is involved, right? So you shouldn't have said that. Now I have to go through the process, right? <laughs> right, and uh, and then they're all ears, right? Then then you have your attention. Once you show them what you know, what is a very contextual, what is different between, you know, sometimes you'll hear things like, um, we already have policies, we have a governance We're process, all good. we're good, yeah, and no, but there are there are a lot of differences. And AI is not one single static system. It's not like deploying a, um, you know, a facial recognition system for uh, ID access. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, it's not one system. It's growing by data. It's learning. It's uh, adapting. Yeah. And yes. It's not a one and done buy and deploy. Not. Right. That's your point. Right. It's not set it, forget it. Absolutely This not. is holistic and also always on. Because it's, it's generating new things. What's the top areas when you when you get to get their attention? If you had the stack rank, you know the top few um, signals that gets their attention on the on risk. What's the top three that jump out at you for them so, that they react to? The wow, I didn't know that. We're good. I think the, the, you know just to take generative AI as yeah. an example, the the um, biggest eye opener is that oh they can be um, you know wrong input like somebody can be trying to put in wrong uh, things so a malicious input so or or even uh, untrained input that can cause really um, unpredictable and heinous uh, outcome so for example i mean whether whether it's you know you've seen the national you may have heard some case such the national disorder eating disorder company um, a society in the uh, us where they deployed a chatbot for giving advice, you know, when people call in the, into, for their hotline. And earlier they had a chatbot, which was static, but then they replaced it with generative AI. And somebody called in, uh, or, you know, nice. that's what the uh, reports are, uh, to say that they had a weight problem, and they said, well, you should be watching what you eat. And so to give that advice to somebody who's bulimic, who's already, you know, could have a deep eating disorder, and is not that's the last thing they need to hear, is that they may have somebody validating that you know you have an eating disorder and you need to take care of your weight so those are the kind of things that that's a high risk situation where it's directly interfacing yeah, yeah. and you don't know what the uh, system will come up with so if you put it in a uh, area where it's directly interacting with a customer or a, a user then that can be uh, harmful so this is where ai scales nicely where you can operationally put these identify risk cards. so this is what gets their attention and then the, the action is you actually have to develop a mechanism for handling that policy or that risk it's risk variable. Right. So there's always an expert involved. Yeah. And um, and then there's the uh, enterprise side, right, of how do you build systems that you're not putting your intellectual property in. So we, we go into all that, right? right? We will work with the cl uh, clients and see what is that um, architecture that they need, How is uh, what is the design they need, and how do you prevent them from uh, just looking at the short term and not looking at it strategically? Because once you put it in there, you really can't pull it back. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you can't unravel. And they got to have teams. Well, Pamela, it's been great conversation. We had a great backdrop here. For the f final word, look at the camera and give the plug for Trust Today. I love your mission. Uh, it's, a, it's just early days. It's just beginning. Again, you've got a lot of body of work going into this. And now with the pillars activated in the market now up and down that pillar stack what are you guys doing what's the pitch what are you guys looking to do they're going to hire give a plug for the company and your mission 
Yes, so absolutely. So the what we are looking at doing is helping adopt AI so because this is an extremely powerful technology and we want to get the benefit from it, right? So we are looking for people who are passionate about leading with AI, want to help people with creating that right people process technology because all said and done, that's what's going to help us stay ahead. You know, we have all this talk of AGI and, and uh, other aspects. First, let's at least get a responsible and trustworthiness in our AI system that we are deploying and know what we are doing. So it, it is going to be with intention. If you are interested in working with us, um, you know, definitely reach out to me, pamela.gupta at trustedai.ai or on LinkedIn. Um, always hiring and looking at growing, but we are a pure play strategy creation company. Yeah. You are teaching them how to fish, not fishing for the customers. Great advisory. If you are in need of help, trust AI, it's hot. Private AI in the enterprise is a category that will be very relevant. We're already seeing early returns on that. And AI in general can't be ignored. Risk management, um, it hits every aspect of the process in a company. Uh, and of course, we gotta be on it. And we're, bringing, we're doing our part here in theCUBE at NYSC as we launch our East Coast hub here in the NYSC as we open up our access point, as we call it, for the network. Uh, excited to cover the tech scene here in New York and up and down the East Coast and connect that to Silicon Valley where our home is and build that network for theCUBE and, and meet new people and fresh voices. Uh, the world needs expertise and of course, feel free to contact us. My name is John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.